attracted toward this electrode, but this is insulated and oxide. So the charges cannot penetrate. They will stay underneath over here. And if you have enough electrons here, it will convert the p-type into n-type. So basically that's how we turn on this device. So once it's turned on, electrons can flow, like in this case, and you can go to a capacitor to store a memory. That's how the memory works. Okay, so basically that's how it goes. So this is a switch. That's how the, the basic building block of your Intel microprocessor, your DRAM, your memory, that's how it works. One of them. Now, nowadays, as you know, uh, things are getting more complicated. People want more. I want a smaller device with more capacity. I want my iPod to play many songs. I want my TV to be very sophisticated. I want my computer to be very fast. So in a sense, we want it to be more complicated. And this is more so telling us that every 18 months, we have doubling the capacity, meaning that today we'll be 2 gig, 18 months will be 4 gig, and then 8 gig, and keep going. And things are getting smaller and smaller. Now if you look at that semiconductor right here, this is the, the, the gate region. If things are very small in this dimension, you're trying to compress many devices in a small area, it has to be very thin also. Okay, along this because it has to be proportional. So this oxide has to be very thin. You are talking about nanometer or even less. If it's very thin, there's a problem. It cannot hold the charges because if you apply a positive charge voltage here, the electrons will be attracted, yes, but then they will tumble through at the same time. So you need something thicker. But we cannot do it thicker, so we need a different material. In the old days, we used oxide at the gate. All right. But nowadays, we're going to use something else, which is high K-directive, which is higher directive constant material to replace uh, the, the, the oxide. Okay, so we are working on this kind of thing, trying to build the next generation integrated circuits. All right? And one application we have is uh, we use vacuum technology, plasma technology, to deposit cadmium, which is a very good element. And then we use ozone to oxidize, to make cadmium oxide, on the surface. So this is a high gate arc, very nice. And I'm going to show you just one picture, just to give you some idea how good that is. This is a high resolution transmission electric microscope, microscopy uh, uh, picture. This is a silicon subject. You can see each atom. Each one is a one silicon atom right here. Single crystal, each one, right? Very nice. This is a heavy oxide amorphous. Right? So we have been successful in making that. I'm not going to go into details of the interlay and all these things, but just to show you, science works. So we can use the technology to build something so nice here and so forth. Now the next application is the SOI. Uh, why are we talking about that? This is our old NMOS technology, NPN. Uh, this is how most devices are built. They are built in silicon, silicon waves. Uh, but because we have so many devices close to each other, they will be communication. They will be cross you know, B versus B, B versus C. And the best way is to isolate each one by a technology called SOI. So basically, we have an oxide layer here. So each device is built on the surface, and then they are isolated by field oxide. So each one is separate. Okay? So it has a lot of advantages by doing this. Uh, but in summary, if devices built here are 30% faster than devices built in silicon. So many companies now, like IBM and AMD, are using this technology in the devices. You can actually see them in your computer. So it's being used. Uh, in our case, we want to make this material cheaper. Because cost is a big thing. How do we make it? Alright? And this is how we do it. Very interesting. The way we do that is to use hydrogen implanted into the material. Alright? To some they are using a plant. Just attract the ions, they go into deep lake. Because these hydrogen atoms are gas, it's a gas hydrogen, right? Qi qi. It's a qi. So it's a gas. So they exist in the material as bubbles. Bubbles. They all converge to the damaged area, and if you heat it up, this bubble will expand. Just like any balloon, right? And then the bigger one will eat the smaller one, and then you will have a plane with a lot of damage, a lot of gas bubbles. And if you do it right, if you let's say bond this thing to a, another wafer with an oxidized surface, and then you do cleavage, this thing can actually cleave at this position. All right? And then you have this silicon oxide silicon material. This is the SOI. And I'm glad to tell you that uh, we're the first one who made this device. This is a sample 4-inch and 8-inch and 6-inch 
uh, several years ago. Right? And because of this, uh, we founded a company in California, in the US, and this company is doing very well. So this actually, not only because of the science, there's also a lot of commercial applications. So from science into commercial uh, applications here. And more, uh, recently I looked into a, a, a trade journal, and it says that uh, there are two things here. Uh, one of the more very uh, popular things is cell phone, okay, of the telephone. Uh, here you have two components. One is the input circuit, the voice, uh, the entering your memory, or your numbers. The other one is the antenna, the transmission. <coughs> they are made of different materials. Uh, the integrated circuit part is made of silicon, whereas the antenna and the transmission part is made of gallium arsenide, C A G A A F. They are not compatible. But people are trying to replace gallium arsenide with SOI. So basically, you can use the same device, same material for. Uh, same thing. The other thing that we're working on is uh, flexible electronics, meaning that the electronics can fold up, unlike a, a plane, like a mat, all right, like a blanket. You can go to the beach with one and then open it up and that's your TV. Flexible. And the way it's being done is organic material. You're trying to build something in polymer. Uh, using layer transfer, we can transfer silicon actually onto a polymeric substrate and use that as a as the building block. So that is. What, what she said, silicon may perform better than any other technology. So that's a, the future of SOI and layer transfer. All right? So but let me just focus on a few more applications here. Uh, we have made the SOI with silicon dioxide. But the biggest problem is uh, thermal uh, problem. Because if you look at the heat conductivity, has anybody opened up a computer before? Look at the CPU. There's a fan blowing on the back. Because the chip gets very warm, because it runs at high clock speed, it gets very warm. And silicon has a heat, heat conducted 145 watt. Compared to silicon, SiO2 is about 100 times worse. You're talking about 1.4 watt. So that means if you have an oxide layer, the heat will be more difficult to be extracted. It's worse. What's the best material for heat conducting? Diamond. Single crystal diamond. That's the best heat conductance. But can we use diamond to substitute for SiO2? This is our, our, our goal. Can we do that? First of all, diamond is a single crystal material with sp 3 tetrahedral coordination. Uh, it's not easy to make. And the first of all, what we need to do is to make the surface very flat. And we have. So this is, a, we have made what we call a diamond light coating, DLC. A uh, very flat surface with a roughness about 0.381 nanometer. We see these uh, parameters, and with that, we're able to make an SOD structure, silicon on diamond. This is tip silicon. In the, instead of having SiO2, we're having diamond like product over here, and silicon substrate. This is a high resolution uh, figure. So it's very nice. So far, so good. Is there a problem? There is a problem. What is the most stable allotrope? Of carbon. Carbon has several elements. One is diamond, carbon. No? One is graphite, and then one is amorphous state, and you have C60. It's not evolved, right? The big problem is when you try to anneal uh, this material, usually in the IC industry, you anneal it to 1000 degree. The thermal, the electrical conductivity goes up because diamond goes into graphite. They are transformed to graphite, and that's a big problem. So it's a good material, we have made diamond, but then when you heat it up, it's no good. What do we do? Alright, so uh, 